point A is the maximum and B is the minimum. So three, three pi over four. Three pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four. There we have a max of nine. And then two pi, so this is a There we have a minimum of five. So there's two. So there's a maximum there, and then it goes down to a minimum. That's always how they give you a maximum and a minimum. It goes from the max to the min. There's no waves in between, just from the top of a wave to the bottom. So to write this equation, all we have to do is write one equals um, a times, so I'm going to decide if it's going to be sine or cosine, uh, b times x minus h plus k. Whether we pick sine or cosine is completely like a decision, it's up to you. You, you decide. Uh, so we need to find the amplitude. We need to figure out what b is once we know what the period is. If we don't know what the period is, we can figure out b. The horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Okay. I'm going to throw one of those in for us. Tell us what's something that we know. Um, you can take uh, the y maximum okay. plus the y minimum. Okay. Over two. And that tells us what? K vertical. What? Uh, K. K, the vertical shift. Okay. So that's uh, 14 over 2. That's 7. So K is 7. That's for sure. Whether you sine or cosine, both of those are going to have a vertical shift of 7. Yeah? Um, 9 minus 5 over 2 is 8. So 9 minus 5 over 2, that's going to be 4, which is 2. That's 2. We might make it a negative 2 if we decide to use sine or cosine, one or the other. I don't know. We, we could definitely make it 2 if we want. Or make it 2. All right, next. We know what P is. P is 2 <coughs> pi over B. So to find B, we can take uh, 3 pi over 4. I mean, 2 times 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. Plus? Minus. minus. Yeah, the reason we do minus here is this is 2 pi. From here to there, that's what that means, right? So from here to there is 2 pi. Uh, from here to there, from here to there is 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, this whole thing is 2 pi. So if we're going to take this whole 2 pi and subtract 3 pi over 4, then we have the, what's in the middle, and that's half of a period, and we would have doubled it. Okay, yeah, so find p is said to take 2 times 2 pi minus 3 pi over 4. <coughs> Two times uh, eight pi over four minus two pi over four equals two times five pi over four cancel five pi over two. So the period is five pi over two. It's equal to two pi over b. Okay, 1 over 2 pi, uh, so 5 pi over 2 times 1 over 2 pi. Pi's cancel and get 5 fourths. What's that equal to? 1 over, one over b, important. <coughs> so we got 5 over 4 equals 1 over b. So b equals 4 fifths. The reciprocal of B is 5 fourths, so the reciprocal of 5 fourths should be B. B equals 4 fifths. So B is 4 fifths. <coughs> now to determine what the horizontal shift is and um, whether you use sine or cosine. You use cosine. You can just take 3, 3 pi over 4. And Make that the shift? Yeah. Yeah. You can always do that, right? They're always going to give you that maximum. The cosine always starts at the maximum. 
a pretty natural, like, if they gave us a middle point, then that might be natural to use the sign. We certainly could figure it out, but what I guess easiest path from, from A to B is to take it to be the cosine. Side way it would look like something like that. Then we could take this from there to there to be a horizontal shift to the right by three pi over four. So if you put a three pi over four there, right, minus a number is a shift to the right. We chose to use cosine. So y equals two cosine four fifths of x minus. 3 pi over 4 plus 7. So it's a lot of numbers and letters and stuff, but if you break it down, it's not that bad. There you go. Does that make sense? Or is that worse? Than before? I think it's not more than it was before we started the question. Any other questions? So all we're trying to do is, is determine or, or to prove that this is the same as that. We can do that. If, if you watch the video, I explained that we don't want to treat this like an equation we're trying to solve and add things to both sides and divide things you know, on both sides. We're just trying to change both sides or, or one side or both sides at the same time using those identities to see if we can get this to look like that. Or maybe we can like, expand this out and get it to look like that. Or maybe we can change both of them and get them both to look different. but different from where they started, but equal to each other. So let's start, see what we can do. Um, remember I said when you have things that are multiplied together, what did I suggest you do there? Or anything, just any other idea that you have. Try to cancel out. <coughs> Try to cancel some stuff out, and how would that be? Yeah. Um, Cosine over one. Cosine of x over one times the other sine. Cosine over or x over sine. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Plus sine x. Then you multiply to get cosine squared. Nice. Cosine. Think about it this way. We got one thing, a term, plus another term. Right? It's two separate terms, one thing added to another. On this side, it's just one thing. Does that make sense? Just one term by itself. So, you know, if on this side we had five plus one, couldn't we just put those together? No, yeah, five plus one. Could we put five thirds with one fifth? No. Not yet. What we'd what we have to do? Okay, we've got the same story right here. We have two fractions that, if we put them together, will have one term, and then maybe that one term will simplify down to be the cosine term. But we need a common denominator. What will that denominator be? Sine the sine of x. So you need to multiply this by sine x. The sine of x. Multiply this by the sine of x. All right, and the numerator here we get. These are going to have common denominators, right? 
so we just add them together. So we'll just like, we'll act like that's just the denominator of, of the combined fractions. Plus cosine squared x. All right, so that's those two combined. Notice anything there? Isn't sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1? It is. If we look at those Pythagorean identities, so they are equal to each other. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So you just trade that out for a 1. Oh, and that's the cosine. And then it's the cosine. Getting a common denominator, yeah. yeah. Maybe it'd be pretty creative to come up with that by yourself. But I did go over that in the video. You did come up with common denominators there, so. Worth watching. Other question? Okay, go on. Account for all the changes that are going to happen in this graph. So, what's one of them? Midline is a negative one. Midline is a negative one. Cool. Amplitude is two. Amplitude is two, so you can mark that off. One, two, that's going to be a positive one. And one, two, is going to be at negative three. And then I just graph that first. Graph cosine. Just graph the cosine. Just graph the cosine. Okay. And then what's that? I tried to make it a, a fairly easy one so that you could do the math pretty quickly, like in your head. Shift it to the left, pi over 2. That's going to shift it. Pi over 2. I'm just shifting it over. 
that much because here's pi, so pi over 2 is that, so pi over 2 on the other side. Try to make it about the same. So where does that put this? It's just from here to there. Pi over 2. In a negative direction. Um, this, this negative 2 times the cosine, so it would be. Oh, you should just flip it over. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so at this point, moved over here, a pi over 2, it has to do this in a different color so we can distinguish it. <coughs> pi over 2, all right, then there was this point right here on the midline, there was a pi, now where is it? Which one? It's just to the left, pi over 2, from pi, it's just to the left, pi over 2, pi over 2. Pi over two. That was that one. Now this one, this one was here in the middle at 2 pi, shifted over to where? 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, should be right there. So, just fix it. This over, this up the, the minimum, the midline over, the maximum over, and we move this midline over, it was, well, it should have looked like it was at 3 pi. Uh, and, and then it's moved over. Better. So that one that's on the midline, it was over here at 3 pi, move it to the left pi over 2, where is that? This one is at 4 pi, it shifts over to where? 7 pi. 7 pi over 2. If you're not sure, you know it's going to move from 4 pi to the left pi over 2. 4 pi over 2. I'm sorry, 4 pi. Thing I always suggest that you do last is the horizontal shift. Wait until after you change the period to shift the horizontal. Avoid any confusion there. expression. Times cosine squared times what's the what's the key, what's the cos again? Um, over 
let's see here. So the cosines cancel, the sines cancel, so we're just left with one here. Uh, yeah, sine, like sine over one times one over cosine squared, so that's, we could think that would be sine squared over cosine. That'd be tangent squared. That'd be tangent, one plus uh, one over the tangent squared. What's one over the tangent? Cotangent. Cotangent. One plus cotangent squared. got to hear, that's great. If uh, you remember the other, like what that is equal to, 1 plus cotangent squared yeah. is the cosecant squared. If I had had these written up here, then I would have expected you to get there, but I doubt in one day you remembered all of those, yeah. So. They got the right answer. Well, it's like right answer, but it doesn't have the X on it. Uh, I'll just put X as a reminder. I'll mark you wrong on the text, though, if you do that. All right? Because the thing is, if I, for example, I just put the letters S, I, and N, that just looks like the word sin, and that doesn't mean anything. When I, when I say sine, I mean sine of something. I take the sine of 35 degrees or of something. So by itself, cosecant squared wouldn't mean anything. X has a meaning. Okay. This is maximum at pi over two. Five pi over two, that's two, three, four, five pi over two. Is uh, K or what's A? What's A? Four. Four. How did you determine that it was four? Because well, I found the midline first. You found the midline. Because that's just so that would be six minus two over two, right? The midline. Six, six minus two over two would actually be A. What the heck? Well, then and then that'd be two. So this would be two. And this would be, yeah. be four. That'd be four. Okay. So the midline, think about the midline. It's a number, right? It's a number right in the middle of six and two. So let's think about a number that's right between two numbers. Let's say you score a 75 on one quiz and 87 on another quiz, and you want to know, like, on average, what's your score? What would you do with those two scores? I don't know if you divide by two, that's exactly what we're looking for here. It's like you got a, a two on one school on one place and a six on another on another. You're gonna find the middle of them. You should add them up and divide by two, which is gonna be the average there. And then A, we're looking for what's the distance from here to there. We could just take six minus uh, K, that'd be one way to find it, or we could take six minus two, that's gonna give us four. And then divide that by two, and it'll just give us this distance right here. A couple different ways of getting there. We got A, we got K. We should probably find D, right? How do we figure out what D is? Uh, two times pi over two minus pi over two. Okay. 
Except. <laughs> Except that period. Five pi over two five. minus five over two. We'll just take the bigger one minus the smaller one. Oh, but if we if it came out to be a negative, we'll just say like, oh, we're not gonna have a negative period, right? Gotcha. Yeah, we'll just take the absolute value. That that'll work out fine. Okay, five pi over two minus pi over two is four pi over two. Four pi over two, so two pi times two. So a period of four pi. How does that help us find b? It's equal. It's say equal to two pi over b. Two pi over b equals four pi. B equals uh, two. We divide both sides by two pi. And so B is one half. This room is haunted. All right, so we found that the period is one half. Maybe now let's find h. What, we, what can we take h to be? If you could, if you, uh, you made that a cosine, the Check. h could be the uh, pi over 2. Could be pi over 2. All right, there it all is. So I'm just going to write it down in a coherent form. Y equals 2 cosine times above 1 half times x minus 5 over 2 plus 4. There is an equation. Maybe another one that works. If you see a different equation there and you wonder if it works the same. Score this out of out of what? Twelve. 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 